Hello, welcome to Hanks, Maker Mentor. Today we're going to be using VLR and doing first impressions of how well it works to remove heat transfer vinyl. I know I have messed up shirts before. This shirt here on the left I made back before I knew the importance of the correct heat settings. And the one on the right I made for my daughter's birthday when she turned two. She'll be three in a few months and since she's already outgrown the shirt, I thought it would be great to test with the VLRs. It has a variety of different heat transfer projects, including some that are layered. So let's start by taking a look at the bottle and what it says. It says to unscrew the spout cap, which was already unscrewed when I got it from Amazon. You puncture the center of the white plastic seal, replace the spout cap and remove the red tip. Use in a well-ventilated area, avoid all sources of ignition, don't use on acetate fabrics, turn the garment inside out and apply a few drops of solvent to the underside of the letter, stretch or pull the area of the mistake, this will release the bond, peel off the letter, remove any residual from the front of the garment using a rag with VLR. This product is not intended for use in electric equipment. So let's go ahead, we'll puncture the top, get it screwed on, and try that first shirt. To make sure my work surface is protected, I took an old towel, just folded it in half, and I'm gonna keep that underneath. I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and I'm gonna start with a very small hole. I am at a high altitude, which frequently sends things out of their bottles quickly. So I just kind of cut a star shape into it. Now I'm gonna slide the scissors in to kind of just push those tabs out of the way. If you've got a better solution of how to open it, please let me know in the comments. I know this bottle is going to last me a very long time, but for your fellow crafters and for if I ever need to do this again, I would love a better method. So we've got that done. We're gonna take the red cap off, put it to the side since we will need it to close it. And we're gonna go ahead and turn the shirt inside out. So you do have to pop a hole in the top of that cap as well. I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna do what they say where you just kind of stretch and pull at the fabric. And that's pulling up really nicely. I'm gonna put my pulled off vinyl in this little bin for now so I don't have to worry about it. And since I have a large amount of shirt, I'm gonna try covering it over a larger section. I don't have that screwed on quite all the way. So let's pull it off, wipe it off. Make sure we've got that nice and dry so it can get a good seal. And try this again. So finding where I want it and then go ahead. All right, apparently this one just doesn't have a good seal. So if you're trying to do super precise, go ahead and test it first. I am trying to do the whole design on this shirt. So I'm not worried about it. And you can stretch it kind of from all directions, not just straight up and down to kind of get everything going. It is easier to pull them off if the shirt is right side out. So I'm just gonna slide the bottle inside when I need to put more on and leave it right side out the rest of the time. It does work if you don't pull it much, but it definitely helps it to come off faster if you have I'm going to actually put my hand like this so I know where to do it, keeping it in place so I know 
but this is exactly where I need it instead of just going, I think it's about here. Yeah, because that made it so I got the entire section I needed in one application. Where the Cricut Cutie was, it definitely left more residue. So I'm going to try their method of using a rag to rub it off. So I've got a rag. I am going to make sure that I put this with my VLR bottle so it doesn't accidentally get used to wipe down tables or as a washcloth or anything. So I'm gonna put some on there and then going to just rub at it. It'll be a little bit easier to tell once it's dry if there's anything sticky left. It looks like it's coming off really nicely. So we're gonna let that dry and we are gonna go ahead and try this other shirt. So because I'm doing that very first one, I am going to flip it all the way inside out and just cover the whole thing and then flip it back and go ahead and just start pulling. So I do have a few places that I've got layered vinyl, I've got metallic and vinyl. It's probably Caesar Easy Weed, but it might actually be Cricut. I'm not really sure what brands I used. So the truck's kind of coming, but not very well. You can see it is definitely starting to wrinkle more. So kind of dried up a bit. I'm going to go ahead and put some more on. I'm gonna just focus on the truck instead of trying to do the whole thing. That might've been a problem. So you'll see we definitely have a lot more wrinkles now. Let's go ahead and try pulling it up again. There we go, much much easier. I think it is still leaving some residue, but that came up nice and easy. Those ones came up no problem. Let's see if that was in a close enough area. Yeah, there we go. All right, I'm still having trouble with the metallic ones, so let's try and work on this number two, see if I specifically focus on it, how well it works. There we go, we're starting to get more of the wrinkles. So if I hold my bottle directly upside down, it does make less of a mess with things going the wrong way. But you will want to keep in mind, if your bottle does that, that if it tips over, even if you've got the red cap on, that's not going to stop it from spilling and making a mess. There is some odor to it. It's not horrible for me. If you are very sensitive though, make sure you either have a lot of fresh airflow, could use a respirator, or just have somebody else do it for you. The bottle does say that you don't need any personal protection. It is flammable and moderately hazardous to your health. I think that's more if you're using a ton of it day after day, but I don't know for sure. On this white one, I can definitely see a line. I don't know if that'll go away when it dries or not. But I definitely also have a lot more adhesive residue on this. So I'm going to try the rag method on part of it just as a comparison to see what happens. All right, so I can still feel that there's adhesive up here where I didn't rub. This one feels good for now, so we'll have to see. So these are dry. It didn't take long at all. I can definitely still feel some adhesive up here on that one where I didn't rub it. The bottom part seems good. I'm gonna make sure I wash these and see kind of if that stayed or if it goes away. So they both come out of the dryer. The green one 
definitely looks good. I mean, there's a few little sections of adhesive left, but those just come right off when you kind of just give them a little bit of push. On the white one, it feels like the adhesive is off where I scrubbed it. There's definitely still some where I didn't scrub it, but we do still have those rings. So we're gonna try and see if it's that there was something on the shirt from when I had been storing it, or if there's just something about the shirt that causes those rings. So I'm gonna test it in a new area and then just kind of pull at it that one is getting a little bit of the ring too. If you look at the shirt directly above that arrow, you can faintly see the word Cricut where the vinyl was protecting the shirt from wear and tear. If this is a design that you're taking off that's been there for a long time and you're replacing it with something much smaller, you'll want to keep in mind that the texture of the shirt could look different. This is not a paid promotion or review. I bought this off of Amazon because I didn't want to have to just throw away these shirts after they no longer looked the way I wanted them to look. Thank you so much for watching. If you found my content helpful, go ahead and like it, share it, subscribe. Until next time, bye.